Good evening and welcome to Bulls and Bears where we explore ASX listed companies that are doing interesting things. I'm Matt Burney and I'm delighted to be joined in the Perth Bulls and Bears studio tonight by Tony Barton, Chairman of ASX listed King River Copper. Good evening Tony. Uh, good evening Matt, thanks for the opportunity to join you. These days it's almost impossible to just head bush and peg a lease that ultimately turns out to be a winner. Most of the good ones have been traded a few times between a few different parties farmed into by others or sold for a lucrative package of cash and shares by the vendors. Not so, however, for King River Copper, who simply walked onto a piece of ground about 200 kilometres south of Kununurra in WA and drove a few pegs into the ground. Almost a year later, King River got around to drilling that ground and in October this year they had their bingo moment that saw their stock price more than double from around 0.8 cents a share to over 2 cents. King River's spectacular drill hit has been the subject of many market speculators and tonight we get to find out a little more about King River's aptly named Mount Remarkable Prospect near Kununurra. Firstly, Tony, can you tell us the results of that spectacular discovery hole? Yes, Matt, we drilled a hole 30 metres depth. Uh, we intersected high grade gold at 14 metres um, and we assayed the first six metres from 14 metres to 20 metres and we, we came back with a result which was six metres of 37 to 38 grams a tonne gold. So more than an ounce to the tonne. More than an ounce to the tonne of gold and also almost two ounces to the tonne in silver. Right. Um, the balance of the hole was, was on a truck to be assayed the following week and it also had high grade gold and we ended up with an intersection which was 11 metres of 27 to 28 grams a tonne gold. Fantastic and, and we've, we've seen the resultant move in your share price over that period of time, right? Yes, no, it's been a good move. I think, I think people are, you know, recognising that it's extremely high grade. Um, we've, we've also intersected that so close to the surface. I think people can see a lot of potential there for, you know, further development. It's fascinating that you didn't buy it from anybody, you simply pegged it, is that true? Yes, that's correct. Uh, there was, a, there was a, a small explorer which has since grown to be a, a large gold company that originally had the leases. Uh, they'd had a couple of intersections of five metres of around 15 grams a tonne gold, um, but they'd decided to drop it when they found another much bigger discovery um, and they dropped all of their, their areas that didn't have jork resources on it. So it's just through good fortune in our part that the ground was vacant and we could peg it. And can you talk a bit about the geology at Mount Remarkable? Uh, firstly, do you think that it might be supergene enriched? And secondly, do you think there might be multiple veins out there or is it just one big vein that you're chasing mm. down? OK, um, look, it is very early days, but we certainly know it's an epithermal gold system and we also know that there are a numerous uh, mineralised veins. Uh, in that intersection, there were actually three veins that we passed through. There was one very near surface that was three metres of five to eight grams a tonne gold. And then there were two other veins that were very close by that made up that 11 metre uh, intersection. Um, we've also picked up rock samples some six to 700 metres away from that Trudy vein intersection, which went 30 grams a tonne gold. So it's obviously a, an area which has got a bit of spice to it, um, mm. and, and we're looking forward very much to pursuing it next year. How many metres of drilling have you put into it, and are you still waiting for some assay results? Yeah, look, we've, we've, we've drilled a little over 2,000 metres of RC drilling. Um, most of those results will be included in the next quarterly report. They, most of them have started to dribble back in the last week or so. Um, and what we do is we basically will include all of the drill results in our quarterly report and we just are going to report on you know, outstanding results inside the quarter that might have a material effect on the share price. And what are the plans now? Have you got a drilling program set for next year? We do. Um, uh, this year we're restricted by the wet season uh, because we don't, didn't have established roads and those sorts of things into the area. So the wet season has begun. Um, we're not going to be able to get back there until April, May of next year. Um, we will start our program there with obviously more soil and surface sampling around because we think there's an excellent chance of these high grade gold shoots being close and near surface. Um, we will survey those holes that we've drilled just to be 100% sure we know the dimensions of that discovery. Um, we will do some diamond holes to 
analyse the rock and be able to uh, to uh, date it better. And you um, think this will happen in April next year? Is that April, right? May. Yeah. So it's, it, it's almost a cruel twist of fate, isn't it? That you get an 11 metre hit going 27 grams per tonne, and you're now rained out until April. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very frustrating <laughs> in this sort of market. Um, Interestingly, Tony, your company name is King River Copper, mm. but you have a gold project, and I understand you also have a massive uh, vanadium titanium project as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? Just how big is it? Yeah, look, we have one of the largest jork resources of, of vanadium in the world, hosted in the titanomagnetite. Uh, Where is it? Uh, it's it's uh, 120, 130 kilometres south of Kununurra. Um, the Jork resource measures something like 4.7 billion tonnes. Uh, it's, it's a flat-lying feature at the surface and the deepest part of the resource in terms of that calculation was something like 50 metres depth. So it's, a, it's an amazing sheet of mineralisation at the surface that would be very cheap to mine. Um, the grade of it is 0.3% is vanadium, 2% titanium and something like 14% iron. Now, in this situation, it's not the grade in the ground that counts. What, what counts is the grade of the concentrate. And because we have a unique tenor of mineralisation, we can, we can mine it, uh, crush it, and <coughs> produce a concentrate which is 50% higher in vanadium grade to our peers. And that's very important because the cost of acid is a key component in, in, in making these titanium, high, high purity titanium uh, and vanadium products. 4.7 billion tonnes, I'm guessing, might equate to six or 700 years' worth of production, potentially. Is that, yeah. is well, that, is that a ridiculous statement? No. Um, I mean, uh, look, and, and we've, we haven't drilled out the total resource, but we thought when we, when we got to a 1,000 years' potential mine life, probably we thought it was probably time to stop. <laughs> What's the strategy now at that particular project? Where do you take it from here? Uh, have you got a scoping study out there? Have you got any numbers around it? Yeah. Uh, look, in the last couple of months, we've started a, a new metallurgical study. Um, our objective is to produce a 99.5% plus purity product of, uh, of vanadium pentoxide uh, or and titanium dioxide and iron. Um, now, those metallurgical studies are quite, quite well advanced. Um, we're expecting in the next two or three weeks to be in a position to to say that we've, we've we've got those sorts of grades or we're very close to it. And does that change the capex requirement? Does it change the processing flow sheet? Well, it's highly likely to, but until the until the scoping study is done, uh, I can't say conclusively that. But when we've got those high purity flow sheets designed, then we'll do a scoping study, which will take another two or three months, and then I'll be able to give you some some ideas as to to what the numbers look like. But I'm I'm certainly expecting that because of the different pro, uh, processes that we're likely to apply, we'll have a materially lower capex than the previous study that was done in 2007. And, uh, and I'm hoping it's going to be highly profitable because of the high purity extra price that we'll command for that sort of a product. Tony, at the end of the day, King River is still a, a small cap ASX listed company. If your vanadium titanium project checks out, I'm guessing the capex is going to be pretty expensive, notwithstanding the fact that you're looking at ways to get it down. What's your strategy to get this thing commercialised? Yeah. Um, look, Matt, uh, you know, despite our, our excellent gold discovery and, and, and this world-class vanadium resource, we've still only got a market cap of 12 million bucks. So, so it's going to be a difficult journey for us to you know, find the money to build a two to three hundred million dollar project. So I feel as though our mission at this point in time is to spend the next six months doing all this scoping work, um, completing the metallurgical test work to de-risk the project as much as possible and then we'll be shopping around for a joint venture partner. Um, we'll be looking for somebody of global scale that's in that sort of industry that will recognise the quality of the resource. We're almost out of time, but can you just talk quickly about the market for vanadium and titanium? Okay. Uh, how big's the market? What's it used for? Who buys it? Okay. The uh, the fo vanadium traditionally is used as a steel hardener, but our focus on this 99.5% purity products is to take us into a whole new level to do with um, 
advanced uh, uh, alloys and chemicals and vanadium batteries, which is one of the emerging new uh, energy storage alternatives uh, for grid storage. Um, and the titanium dioxide, the high purity of that is used for these master alloys, which is aerospace industries and a lot of the new uh, advanced uh, technologies mm. and cars and those sorts of things that we see unfolding. Very interesting. Uh, Tony Barton from King River Copper, thanks very much for joining me in the Bulls and Bears Perth studio tonight. Good. Thanks very much, Matt, for having me. If you'd like to learn more about King River Copper, their stock code is KRC and their share price is sitting at around 1.3 cents a share. I'm Matt Burney and you've been watching Bulls and Bears in our Perth studio. For more small cap stories, go to the Bulls and Bears section of the West Australian newspaper website at thewest.com.au and click the business tab followed by the public companies tab. You may also like to follow us on Facebook, Twitter or LinkedIn. Good night.